Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the show. Today's feature is my buddy, returning guest, Laren Loveless. Laren stops by to talk about his brand new solo debut album. We had a really uh, a lot of fun recording this one. And uh, his album's amazing. If you haven't got it yet, be sure to check that out. You're going to get a little sneak peek on this episode, but you can find it streaming on all the major platforms now. And uh, be sure to check that out. It is funky and uh, a lot of fun. So uh, I want to remind you that Rock Paper Podcast is brought to you by Roughneck Beard Company and American Rambler. Located uh, right here in Maplewood, Missouri, off of Manchester. You can shop there, or you can shop 24-7 uh, at uh, roughneckbeardcompany.com. Use my code RPP15 for an exclusive 15% off your purchase of all your uh, favorite beard oils, balms, or junk powder, or even uh, their Roughneck Genesis, which features aloe vera juice infused with biotin, B12, MSM, and glycerin. This product will actually help your hair and skin pull moisture in from the air around it, keeping everything soft and healthy. Just a couple of quick sprays before adding your favorite beard oil and balm, and you're good to go. Uh, Again, check out roughneckbeardcompany.com. Use my code RPP15 for 15% off. Uh, Also, big thank you to Heil Sound for their support and help me make this show sound great. Visit heilsound.com today and get yourself some new microphones. Uh, that's about it for me, everybody. Thank you again for tuning in. Thanks for all the continued support of this show. If you need me, you can find me at rock paper podcast at Gmail or any of the socials. I would love to hear from you. And, uh, if you got any requests or anything else, whatever it is, feel free to hit me up. It would be nice to connect. So, uh, with that out of the way, sit back, relax, Enjoy this funky new episode with Laren Loveless. Um, a podcast is kind of like a... It's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. Hello. <laughs> this is Laren Loveless, and you are listening to Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast Scissors beat paper, paper covers rock Rock beat scissors, Shane covers non-stop Never know what new kind of guess that he's got coming at you Live and direct on the spot Could be rock, folk, country, or hip-hop, jazz All kind of folks that he has Could be an artist or a comedian to make you laugh On the Rock Paper Podcast Double decker fudge round, rolling round time Shane coming at you live and direct from ground zero He's your hero, he's your bestie Rock Paper Podcast with Shane Presley Rock Paper Podcast Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast Coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri Hanging out today with Laren Loveless What's up? Hi. Hey, welcome back to the show, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, man. This Thank is uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, we man, I don't I forget now what the date was, but you did one of these uh with a couple buddies, Alex and Sean. That's right. Uh when you guys were working on uh your game show at the time. The OGs, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The these wo- are OGs, man. The woodshed. That was great. Which uh was cool, so like, is that's like really like the beginning of our friendship, I think. Like it was pretty early on, you know. Yes. I did we we definitely uh, become buddies through voodoo shows. Yeah. And um, and so that was just like, you know, again, that was pretty early on in our friendship. And so since then, I've like learned so much more about you. Uh, and so like that's what's fun about this opportunity. Just yeah. me and you, we can kind of dial in and talk about uh, some of the past and some of what you're working on now with a brand new record. Yeah. And uh, so, <laughs> uh, but uh I, uh, I guess let's start with uh, some of that, uh, some of the early days, because like I said, yeah. I don't know a ton of uh, about Laren, but yeah, you, uh, uh, I guess always always grew up here, in St. Louis. Yeah, I was born in Cook, Illinois, um, and then moved here to Hillsboro, actually at Hillsboro, uh, Missouri, uh, when I was nine. Yeah, and then uh, went to high school there, and then 
made a few rounds to New York City at 18 and then came back here and, and met my wife at like 24. And I've been, yeah, I've been in the St. Louis ever since. Yeah? In what, the city, uh, that is. Yeah. What took you to New York? Uh, my best friend in the world, shout out to Franklin Killian, uh, it, he, he, was a, he was an actor. And uh, he was in a conservatory called Stella Adler Conservatory. So he was like, man, make an audition tape. You're going to be a shoe-in. Um, just get in here. I was like, okay, that sounds great. He said shoe-in, so I was, I was hooked. <laughs> All like, right. I don't even know what a shoe-in. Let's do it, man. Yeah. So uh, I made an audition tape and, and got in and started studying acting. Back in the day, I thought I was going to be the next fill-in-the-blank. You know, Robert De Niro went there. Marlon Brando went there. Um, way back when and I thought I was going to be like the next you know James Dean or something right. so I had this very 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 <laughs> egotistical <laughs> approach I was like mom I'm going to crush this man I'm going to be the next De Niro just wait um, he said shoe in yeah he said shoe in he said, he said shoe and in uh, so yeah that failed horribly which a lot of what we're going to talk about is how Laren fails yeah. and how it wh- where I am now is because of these things like learning how to deal with it so yeah, but we moved back um, after I, I I just couldn't afford to live in New York anymore. Um, and so I moved back to Hillsborough with my tail between my legs, so they say. Started over, started saving some money, and uh, that's when I started getting into music and mm-hmm. started meeting these friends now that have become mentors, you know, for me. Yeah. So. Well, that's the thing. Like uh, I said... Uh, that I didn't know a lot then, but uh, since uh, then, I, I think it was Sean told me about uh, you playing in a band and that you were the drummer of the band. I wanted to be the next Levon Helm. Yeah. So I had to get in a long, long line of drummers who want to be like Levon Helm. And yeah, man, I studied, I studied the Last Waltz and Martin Scorsese's films for so long, and. I discovered this film that I've never knew of before. I was like, who are these guys who can play and sing and write these incredible stories and turn them into songs? And um, yeah, I started just studying this this movie like a like a football coach, you know, right. play by play. And this drummer, which I I grew up learning how to play the drums. My dad, it was the first instrument my dad disciplined me. To like lock the door. I'm talking dead bolted the door in our basement. Do not uh, like Step Brothers. Right. Do not play my drum set. <laughs> <laughs> like, if did you play my drum set? I mean, there were times where he had this old Polaris set. Which, if any one of you listening knows what a Polaris drum set is, kudos to you because I, I I don't see him around anymore. Um, and he was like, "Yo, do not do not go down here because I will take the switch <laughs> to you." And I broke the rule. Right. And, you know, I was I was like, I had to be at least seven or eight. I mean, I was way too young to even play with certain things. And I broke one of the heads off the tom. And he made me earn the way to get back to it. And he started teaching me how to, how to play. And from then on, I played in churches and, and learned gospel music. And so somewhere in between that, that time, that mix of music... I started falling in love with this sound that Levon Helm and the band naturally had. It was just like, when I saw that movie, it like, it zapped me to the point where it was like blood. It was like, are these, are these my cousins? Like the way their harmonies were, that's the every family reunion on the love side sounded like that. It was all gospel. It was all like this mesh of um, this Americana, American Mark. music, yeah, um, the roots of America. And yeah. And so, um, I tried to be like him, you know, at 25, I was, I was back at it or I was doing my own thing, but I was definitely, every time I said at a drum set with this band, we're talking about Reeling Gilly. Um, I, I tried to emulate him. I was stealing everything. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think that's where everybody, you feel like a lot of people find something like that, that motivates them, inspires them to play. Yes. And you, and you get to that point where maybe somebody else starts noticing, hey, you're doing that guy's thing, right. and then you need to figure out how to make that, how to make your own thing, and like, but right. but everybody starts as like emulating somebody else, and like so totally, right, 
totally. And that was a mashup of that and, of course, some early... We'll talk about early uh, idols that will come up with the record. But this guy left an imprint on me. Yeah, Levon was huge. I actually had a chance to meet him, kind of, which the backstory is shorter than you think. It's We went to Memphis when I was... I just recorded this record called Jake West with The Railing Gilly at Central Cellar Studios in Columbia. And I knew all the Bachman boys, which were the the band that Sean Cannon played. This was his first band that he played with. And these guys, like Bachman, were they were a staple for us. We were like we were super intimidated by them. And my the bandmates that I met with the Reeling Gilly, who had been playing for years, they all knew Sean. They're like, "Yo, don't screw this up. Like whatever you do." And we were invited to this this um, festival in California, Missouri called The Barn Out. Have you ever heard of this? Oh, yeah. The Barn Out? You know about it, right? Yeah. I mean, there are so many gypsy stories about this thing. So, I had no idea what I was doing. I'm just barely playing and singing at the same time. uh, Drums, that is. And we have this this demo that's soon going to turn into this record called Jake West. And through meeting the right people with Sean Cannon, especially, um, he just put us in contact with the right players that got us our first few gigs that then got us our first few major shows our major record uh, um, you know experience uh, with Will Reeves and and then we recorded Jake West and after Jake West we um, we yeah we started to to play these these very again still like emulating the band shows with alongside Sean and got our tails kicked in man <laughs> Got our tails kicked. It was... I learned so much by watching these musicians, you know. Um, oh, God. Yeah. I was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was bad. Well, for, for me, like I said, I, I met you through Sean Cannon's Voodoo Players uh, on Wednesday nights at Broadway Oyster Bar. Yeah. And, it, yeah. you know, I'd seen you guys come and do... You do, you know, you got your uh, soul night, and uh, yeah. of course, uh, one of my particular favorites is uh, the Blues Brothers. Yes. And, uh, you coming in and, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, so th- like seeing you as a front man uh, for for that band uh, doing vocals, like it's hard for me to imagine you sitting at a drum kit uh, playing because you're you're so much energy up there on the front uh dancing and singing and everything so yeah. it's just hard to imagine you sitting behind the kit for an hour or playing that's a very very cool thing for you to say and i appreciate it um yeah man it, dude it, sean would say it to me all the time i mean when he saw us with gilly he was like you have to get out of there like you have to figure out a way to get i know you're a great drummer i know you're like this focal point i know levon's your hero but forget about that like you, you have this thing, you have this thing naturally. So, um, my voodoo career, if you will, as a frontman, a frontman. Period. I mean, I just did not sing in front of people like that. Uh, it just made me uncomfortable, and I liked how the drum was becoming a shield and a sword right. at the same time. It was becoming this this double edged weapon, but yet it also shielded me from, you know, it protected me. Um, but Sean was like, "Dude, get him out." get him in front, let him sing, let him take over, um, and let him learn, like, how to, you know, watch a band, know the cues, know when to... These little things we take for granted, like the James Brown hand gestures and signals that he would do, you know, on stage with this sure. band, is... That's incredibly hard. We think it's really, really easy, but it's it's not. Like, when you start to sing in front of people for the first time. I can't, I can't tell you how many times I ate it so hard. And Sean took a chance, really stepped over and was like, yo, come, come collaborate with me. It was a wedding uh, for Sean Cletus Bale, actually, that started that, that career. Well, so your first time really getting to be the front man was at a wedding? Yes. Nice. Sean Cletus Bale, a friend of ours. What's up, man? Um, we... He, he wanted to hear of some band Morrison for his for his wedding and he got Bach or the Bachman boys again uh, to play and so Andrew Weir and and Sean Cannon um, and Ryan Kennedy we were all practicing in Sean's basement 
And uh, this was almost, God, it feels like 10 years, but it's probably only six. That's right. how time just drifts away. Um, we're playing these songs like Moon Dance and Caravan. And Did you have the red, Crazy the red suit? No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't go into the uh, costume department yet. No, but there's that movie again with Last Waltz. You know, you go back to the play by play and how much is in us. And so, uh, yeah, Sean uh, Can- Canton was like, "You should sing lead on most of these songs, and also we should talk about how we can book a show for a Van Morrison night." Right. I've got some opportunities for you, and I never. I was like, "No way." I mean, I, I still was like. No, I, I, I don't. I just wasn't confident. Um, I didn't have the experience, and I just didn't feel it. And I was still trying to figure out a way with what Real and Gilly was doing. A lot of the bandmates by that time would moved away, and it was just a sad truth that no one wanted to face the reality that the the group was over after yeah. the first record were done. You know, and uh, Sean everywhere we went, he was like, "Yo, this guy wrote this album called Jake West." listen to it he's really talented he can sing he can do everything but i want you to i want you to again he was like selling me everywhere we went so i just won't forget it you know you can't take you can't take that 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 like it's like the opposite of ego that he has it's like he's he's so humble um yeah well he's definitely always been like ever since i've known him he's wanted to lift all his friends up like that like i saying like i mean he Obviously, the having a band like that where you can bring in so many incredible players, totally. and, and he's introduced me to so many through you know, like I mean, I've always been a fan of what we had going on in here in St. Louis, but there was definitely a lot of pockets of St. Louis music that I was unaware of, right. and like, and that was a way for me to, even though they were coming in singing uh, whatever Van Morrison or you know Bob Marley night or whatever it was, yeah. we we were doing that night. Yeah. Uh, he would bring in some new players, and I'm like, well, "Who's this guy? I've never seen him play." And then all right. of a sudden, I'm like, "Blows my mind!" Oh, and yes. and I want to go look at what he does for original music now. Totally, you know. So I just got it's a good introduction and you know, foot in the door to what this person does for their career and things. Absolutely, so, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so I, I I love what Sean's been doing. Uh, the voodoo player stuff is, I mean, yeah. it's. Uh, I'm I'm really uh, been missing it, man. Like it's Me so too. it's so sad that uh, I can't go down there every Wednesday and uh, and no. dance. And but uh, I know hopefully we'll be back there before too long. And uh, yeah, I hope so too. I know the guys just uh, played the other day and got to do some some Jerry stuff. That's and, right. I'm always watching his feed yeah. and 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 just again just taking notes on what he's doing. And I can't tell you how many times he calls and with the record like gives me advice. And just says like yeah. this is how we did it with falling fences, but maybe this is how you should do it. And um, I just don't. I just again, I don't take that advice like uh, I take it very, very wholeheartedly and and really study it, what he's doing. And he, it's crazy because if you would have told me then, when I was Levon Helm, you know, copycat, that this is what I was going to be doing, because he, he's he's constantly. Uh, reaching out and saying, "Yo, free, he, there's this ongoing um, hashtag, if you will." When he sees me, he says, "Free the bird" or "Free the lovebird." <laughs> yeah, and he's—it's always been the plan. Like he—he he, he was setting me up to just jump off and just see what happens after you get pushed off. Yeah, man. I think that's super cool. That it's leadership. Even if it? you don't see it in yourself, he sees it. You know, and yeah. like, and he believes, and he's going to keep water in that plant until yeah. until you finally bloom you know it's like totally. and uh so kudos to sean for seeing it Absolutely. uh years ago and thank you because uh because yeah now <laughs> yeah. I mean, now you're taking flight man like you're saying yeah. free the bird because this record uh jake west is a great record i listen to that oh, also thanks, it's a it's, oh, dude, it's a fun album uh but this is uh now we're getting into you as a solo artist uh and we have this i guess this debut record coming yeah. out yeah and sounds yeah. incredible man like thank I, you i was thank digging you. it i was i've listened to it twice today oh, right. uh and Good. you i know uh you got to record with a lot of these guys yes. uh from, that we've mentioned already if they've been voodoo player gigs yes. and stuff so you have an all-star cast do you want to talk about some of these guys you brought into the studio with you yeah well, we'll start with ben mazak who produced the record um at native sound native sound is unbelievable 
and Ben Mazek and I have known each other through again. I call it the win- the window of St. Louis because there's just there's this strange revolving window or this revolving door that St. Louis is where you just run into everyone that you somehow they they know you and yeah. you know them. It's and like the biggest small town. Like a, totally, it's like totally yeah. yeah. So Ben Mazek's mom. Sue Mazek teaches with my wife. Okay. And she kept bringing this up. Oh, my son records, and you should totally, re- you know, get off your butt and record what all these songs you keep talking to us about. You're going to talk. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I, we went to, we were at a wedding again. It's all these weddings. And then we, we went to stop off at this malt shop in St. Charles. And here I was with Ben's mom and dad. And Ben, ben loves when I tell this story. <laughs> Because Ben's dad's a great, I mean, he's a renowned, like, he is an epic piano player. And, uh, and Ben's dad's like, so what are you doing, man? What's, what, what's, what, what's all this music? What are you doing with it? What are you going to do? He's very, very assertive. And he calls it like you see it, you know? And he's like, well, why don't, listen, you have a son now. Do it for him. <laughs> Re- record, just, just play the, re- do the thing for him. Get it out. And something about the way he said the word, the delivery and the landing got me to go, yeah, I think you're right. So I finally gave Ben a call. And we talked about songs that have sat around since, you know, for like five years that I've been just sitting with these sayings, these new sounds um, that I feel like I, I need to get out of demo state. Mm-hmm. I think, it, again, it's that drum, here I am hiding behind the drum, the shield and the sword. I'm like, uh, I, need to, I need to pull the Band-Aid. It's time. I'm going to listen to my mentors and just pursue it. The cast is, dude, I mean, I am nothing without, and you can hear it on the record, you know, so if you love any of these people, do it for them, because the record is silly with the icing that is St. Louis. Uh, Funky Butt Brass Band, little band named Funky Butt Brass Band. I don't know if you heard of them, if you have. Um... Yeah, uh, the boys came in, shredded it. Kazumu Taylor is... So I, I had this awesome, awesome opportunity to get a bunch of sick brass players, not at the same time, but for the same record, Yeah, tucked away on this record. Kazumu Taylor from The Dark Room, uh, he and I have been friends for a long time. Um, an incredible jazz musician. Yeah. Um, Matt McKeever, uh, again... An incredible musician. I met him through Stevie Wonder Voodoo. Uh, my my brother from another, Sean Cannon, like we said, Dave Grelly. Silly man. <laughs> him and Spanky on one record together. Like I'm sorry, right? But come on. Like I was trying to make this mega four headed dragon band. You know what I mean? <laughs> Where I'm like, even if these songs are not that good, they're gonna make them really. <laughs> Tony Bavarda and Zeb Zebediah. I mean, okay. I first saw Zebediah play for Voodoo Prince. When I first met him, <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I'm gonna tell a lot of a lot of truths here tonight. But I met Zeb and I was like, it was at Sean's basement again. Here we are in Sean's basement. I'm like, bro, who who is this dude? Right. Like, what is he doing? <laughs> yeah. Like, what's going on? I'm like, is he like, is he here to? What is he doing? Like, what's happening here? He comes in with a baseball. Like, he looks like me right now. He's got a baseball cap on. He's totally lounging. He's like just chill. Like, you don't mess with this guy. Like, he's so chill that I'm like, kind of intimidated, but kind of like, I, I don't, I don't understand. What, what's, what's, what's happening? Is he gonna film this? Is he a part of a film crew? <laughs> the minute he plugs in the bass and starts asking questions and I close my eyes I knew that he was he was the one yeah I'm like this guy is gonna teach me so much about the origins of this music that I think that I've obtained as a kid like these this this black music man like this this music that is soul and funk and like just this stuff that's been ingrained in me um Zeb has it, and, and and him and Tony together, I mean, it's it's just a silly pocket, you know. Um, uh, Adam, there's another um, another great guitarist that plays on the record named Adam Tressler. 
he was recommended through because uh, I wanted a multiple just like Michael and what Prince would do of course too is layer these incredible rhythm tracks down and I wanted two sides to every coin for the record so I knew what Sean was going to do I knew his ideas because we've been talking and sitting through this record together um, so I'm like I want the opposite of that I want it to be like Wolfpack like like punchy um, and so Adam Tressler came in and and uh, lay down the guitar. Yeah. And Ina Cook uh, is on background vocals. She should not sing background for anyone. <laughs> right. She's a, she's a superstar. She's a, pow- she's a yeah. powerhouse. Yeah. She's a powerhouse. And I hope that um, I hope that COVID gets the vaccine so she can let her phoenix bird shine because mm-hmm. she is an insanely talented human being. And then uh, and, she- and just that's what. Uh, yeah. I love about all this too like yeah. let alone all these people yeah. are world class musicians and yeah. they happen to live here in St. Louis yeah. but they're all like the coolest people too like they're all some of my best friends mm-hmm. and you know like I said I can just hang out with them at Oyster Bar on <laughs> weekly and everything else absolutely and so uh, I don't want to forget Sean England who played um, percussion yeah and he, he created half the sounds right here where we're sitting in my basement so uh kudos to him that dude is amazing he's a wizard <laughs> right yeah, yeah man. But you're right it, this cast is unbelievable well that's so. uh so we're talking about uh is it self-titled is that correct this is laren loveless volume one volume one there we yes. go all right yes. and it will be available everywhere you get your digital music on august 20th 2020 and uh we're gonna let you hear the single uh that'll be yeah. coming out uh <laughs> And this is a song called Sing. And you want to uh, yeah. tell us a little bit about Sing? So my mom was my biggest fan. She still is my biggest fan, but she was definitely the one that, again, she was like the first of many mentors like Sean Cannon, who was like, boy, get, get out here and show your aunts and uncles that are over here now hanging out for dinner and dessert. Come <laughs> I hear you, boy. I hear you. Um <laughs> Come out and sing your songs. And I would carry around this boom box as a kid. I mean, I'm talking two and three years old. That was my toy of choice. Right. A microphone hooked into those old school boom boxes with, you know, the cassette uh, player in there. And I would record, like, it, it, it started primitive, like, la, da, 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 and then that, those la, la's turned into lyrics, and those lyrics turned into songs. And sing is one of the earliest melodies i still have every cassette that i ever i know it's a hoarder thing man sorry (laughs) it's a hoarder's paradise but sing is one of the earliest melodies i ever created and i i would go back and eventually sample myself and like loop them and i just came up with this hook sing what your mama gave it you can sing so the chorus says sing what your mama gave you shake what your mama gave you um and yeah and she just encouraged me to play the songs from this boombox and and uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm taking this off and running with it. Um, and so, yeah. So, I mean, that's really the song. The, the lyrics talk, you know, tell a story about how, when, and we listen to everything now that's so different because of, of the times we're in, of course. But, um, you know, the past and how we could walk safely uh, and play. I mean, I don't know about you, but we played... My dad and my, my mom would say, yo, come home when the street lights are on. Right. On, the, on your bikes, just ride back home. And I don't know if I would do the same when Lennon gets to be, you know, a, a, however old he's going to be when he starts riding a bike. I don't know if I would give him the same advice. Right. So um, that's that. Yeah, that's sing. It's almost like a, a memory that's, a, you know, that's trapped in my head, this echo of, of this time. Once 
song We used to sing it all day long And we ba da 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 ba 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 da thousand times before Yeah, yeah, yeah If you could sing, sing what your mama gave you You could shake it, shake what your mama gave you Is there a, a real song you kind of allude to there in the lyrics of a song we used to sing? Uh, and then, oh, and like, yeah, man. Is there, Good on you for that. Is there really a song there? Or so you that... know how, you know, Tedacious D, the, 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 that's not the song at all that right. they're supposed to be singing, right? Which I think, is still, I think is still Stairway, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my theory is that it's Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> um, but so it's multiple memories in – and the whole album is just – that's what it is. It's just mm-hmm. postcard. It's like a. It's like Kodak pictures. Oh yeah. All of them are Kodak pictures of this time. Um, but that line, I say, yeah. Um, uh, what's the name of that one song we used to sing it all day long? It goes ba da 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 da. That melody is from something else. It's an early one of the earliest um, uh, Motown melodies that I ever I ever right. learned. But the a thousand times before is because there is this song that it reminded me of from the band I used to play drums with called Spectator. And I used to play drums with Meg and Jeff, uh, Meg Rooney and, and Jeff Albert. And they had this song that was called Riptide. And the guitar riff was like, bam, da, 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 and it made me think of that. I think it was The Temptations, maybe it was Stevie uh, song. And I'm like, man, though, this makes me, this brings me back to that time again of, of when I was a kid and I was right. like riding my bike through the, and if you listen to Riptide, it's, it's a direct quote from his lyric. Like there's a lyric that he says a thousand times before. So it's literally taking a hybrid of the old memory as a kid. And then that memory again, it came back again. It came back to me again when I was in their attic playing drums it hit me again and I'm like okay 
I'm going to follow Brian Wilson's advice. Brian Wilson said, you know, you can write a song, spend all day long on it, then just erase it, forget about it, tuck it away in a drawer. And if it comes back to you again, that's when it's worth pursuing. That's when it's worth, when it keeps just coming back. That means there's that echo, right? Sure. So it did. It just kept haunting me. And I'm like, dude, I, ha- I have to get it out. Um, and yeah, that's the... the story behind that nice man yeah man, this yeah. is a lot of fun you said there's a might, might be a music video coming uh, there's soon? a music video that's for the families i mean this because it's very interactive uh it's very like yo we're at home we're together we're trying to figure out how to connect uh if you will it was shot by owen ragland um a great friend and uh i'll bring him up i'm sure later mm-hmm. um but yeah it was shot by him and uh it's it's uh it's just to spark joy. That's it. Nice. It's just to spark joy. So I hope that it does the trick. But yeah, it'll be it'll be released um, on the twentieth as well to right watch on. it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I figured it had to be something because uh, yeah. the song itself yeah. makes you feel good. It's just you know, like I'm saying, it's this whole record really is like like you're saying. You mentioned uh, kind of like these snapshots uh, in pi- totally. you know pictures of the, and uh, like in the whole record overall. I feel like they're all new songs and they all feel new and current but there's right. also so many things that like feel familiar like and that it makes you reminisce about all these records we're talking about stevie and temptations or whatever totally man. all that it's in that vein of you know like and i love i love that kind of stuff where it's like you almost yeah. dusted off this like long lost album and, and fell in love with it all over again today and stuff so all right on i appreciate that man yeah man it feels like it appreciate feels it. feels real good yeah uh one of my particular favorites I wanted to talk to you about Please do Because uh, there was a Let it rip There's a song called Show Me What Feels Good oh, To You yes That's Ben's I mean Ben just kept going back to this yeah. song man Yeah But Sure That uh, sure. What is uh, That's key, Keys in there in the middle Or like that The like solo? solo Yeah Yeah that's Dave That's Dave on Keys I think Chopping it up
That is like so funky, man. So funky, bro. And it feels it feels so good, like when you're just cruising in the car, jamming to it, and like, and I I just I can't wait to see it live. That's what I'm excited about. Oh I'm like, man, I know. I can't wait to play them live, even if it's a way to like do the thing where we're filming it from the backyard or whatever yeah. we can do. That's awesome too. But that, I cannot wait to play it with them. I'm glad you because I, I felt like it was Dave just because like I know how yeah. funky he can get and it's yes. a f- lot of fun to watch. I mean we got a lot of great keys players in town, of but, course. But uh, Dave is one of my favorite to watch and and uh, but that is like and I also like it almost feels like uh, it would be like a keytar thing too. Like it, like I feel like that kind of vibe. Like it would be fun to watch. Uh, yeah, on a keytar or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it is. But. It's again like uh, I'll use life lessons too, and I'll use like I said, photo book or, or you know uh, Kodak pictures from these are these Polaroids. You know, um, it, it was like it was a flashback of this time when I first heard Prince, and I heard Prince and Michael, of course, but I heard Prince when I was I was like almost out of high school, which I think is kind of late in the game personally Mm -hmm. um but it's because i went into a record shop long story short and was dared to fit in with some i was hanging out with some dudes that were i hanging out with the wrong crowd as they say and uh here i am making a here's another failure story i was dared to get the initiation really like yo you you want to you want to hang with us man you want to hang with us you want to you think you're like awesome you think you're tough then Go into this record store and see what you can walk out with. Like, see what see what you do. And I walked in and I stuffed records and CDs like in my pants. And I walked out and I got on the clear and I was like, "Yeah, it was great." And then the the initiation was over. I have no idea what's in my pants. I have no idea what I got away with. <laughs> and all the guys right away, like they're like, "All right, man, we'll see you later. Good job, dude. Yeah, man, we'll see you in school." Like it was just just a peer pressure, like to say what's up in a hallway. And the owner of the record store is standing in the alley the entire time. And he's like, you're going you're gonna to pay that. You're going to pay all that shit back all right. that you stole. Uh, I'm going to make you work for it. I'm not going to tell your parents. I'm not going to tell. To this day, my parents do not know about that. Um, I pull out what I get, all the findings. And it was the first Prince. It was Prince, like his, not his first record, which is like weird. And I think it's, there's no title on it. I'm talking Prince, self title with Feel For You and, you know, th- these, these, the first hits he ever had. Um, and then 1999 was in there too. So I just stole Prince unknowingly. So it was the first time I remember putting it in my dad's record player, putting the headphones on, and that response, that pat that that sound was in me and i remember hearing and talking to dave and going dude do you have a key do you have a, a guitar and he's like i think it's called a shoulder synth <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i'm like okay yeah do you have that <laughs> do you have something like that and he's like yeah 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 dude we can we can do that and dude i have it on video on my phone i still watch it when i need a little pickup this dude Dave is like attacking the Nord that he's playing. I mean, again, you close your eyes and you think it's, yeah, you think it's an 80s video where he's like crushing it, you know? But yeah, those guys like Prince and, and um, Larry Graham, dude, those guys, those guys knew what they were doing with that stuff, yeah. man. So it, it's a direct memory of that. I go, I want it to feel like this. I want it to be this date purposely right. in my head. Yeah. Well, yeah, man. That uh, that was That's cool. a lot of fun, man. I really That's enjoyed cool. that track. Yeah, I'm and, glad you brought that up. Uh, that uh, there's a couple of other things like I really enjoy. Like as as you're listening, like you're kind of talked about those, some of those moments, like that James Brown though, yes. where he's leading the band, and there yes. and there's a lot of moments like that throughout the record that I really love. And then again, I when I see it live, because like where you're like. Uh, you know, like where my the beat might drop out, and you're like bring that beat back, kind of thing, or bring whatever, or that, yes. and different things, cool. or like you were, and then like you can definitely feel uh, on some of the vocals where you're like, um, kind of, uh, you know, scatting a little bit or impro- improvising with Absolutely. and things, and like, and it's just like, I totally feel like feels live uh, yes. when on the recording and stuff, so yes. it feels 
good. Yeah, I appreciate that too, man. Yeah, there was there was this, you know, these conversations that Ben and I had when we were in the the vocal booth. Um, we were doing these sessions just he and I together, and and we we don't want to shut that. I don't know. There was like some. I don't know if it's Did that, something it's flying like, to get you. Well, I just feel like the <laughs> air blowing it, uh, but a, like a almost like an oscillating there a, fan. Or there something. was a gust of <laughs> yeah. something. Yes, it's Prince probably. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we can shut that too if you want to. Yeah, it might, might be you want good. Me to? Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were we were we were recording, um, you know, the vocal sessions, and I had these these demos ready from my house, where I was playing keys on everything. At first, I would set up all the sounds and I would beatbox them just like I I've been doing. So when you hear like one of the songs is called "Bring the Band," I had which is very soulful, very. Um, in my opinion, it's very, very Blues Brothers, the, the riff. But it's got this... And we kept the same ad lib, purposely. The same beatbox, the same intro to that, to that song. Right. We made a pact to really keep the stuff that makes it real that doesn't we don't want to get too polished we don't want it to be too pretty i think that's a that's an ongoing theme too that's happened with like with nate burrell too like who's who took these incredible shots for the video which nate burrell when you say his name just like most of these players again when i say their names it gets a reaction like you just did which these these people bring so much to the table of st louis and uh, I was fortunate enough to work with him, and he he uh, he said <laughs> the first thing he said to me was when we were taking shots and we were in his in his house. It was great. We were having coffee and just telling stories. And uh, he listened to the record again, like you, like several, you know, a few times, and and got a vibe for it. And he was like, "Yeah, man, this isn't a young man's game, pop, is it? <laughs> it's not." I'm like, "Yeah, you're right, but but." I didn't think about it right away because I was kind of nervous and I was like, man, I just don't want to screw this up with this guy and I, I, I want it to look good. Um, but then that set in on the way home when I was driving home. I'm like, after the session, I was like, dude, it, it's it's not. A, pop, pop or music is not a young man's game. You have to have these stories. You have to have something, an experience. Mm-hmm. You have to have some kind of experience for them. So that's why we wanted to keep this Realness. Ben was very, very, very adamant about, yo, dude, don't, let's go back to the demo. You did something else. Remember that? I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to keep that? And he's like, yeah, dude, that's, that's you. That's your thing. Right. That, that, that nonsense that you do in the beginning. <laughs> like, there are several moments when I just scream and it's in there. It's in the background. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Or I'm going, wow, or whatever it is. <laughs> And it's just my reaction to what the band and the musicians are doing. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love all that little stuff like that. And thank you. Man. Uh, but you know, like you're saying that it being a uh, young man's game or, or any of this stuff, uh, I want I don't want uh, that to come off as like the this record. I feel like is as current as anything for even, sure. Even if it feels like totally it's still old school oh totally, totally it can be on the radio today absolutely and, man uh absolutely that's what i love about it too like it's it's bringing all that influence but it's also you know as current as ever so yeah um, oh i appreciate you tying it back to that yeah, yeah um yeah i'm I, it's the stories that make it and and really that yearning and now more than ever you know the yearning of those the the days when we were able to get outside and and hang out with each other um but that's what i was really picking up on that vibe but yeah, yeah. dude, i appreciate that and and especially hearing it from you is is such a great thing to to hear that it could be on the radio yeah, that is man. not what we were sitting out to do all right <laughs> <laughs> but i really appreciate that yeah man well that. and there's another i want to talk about another track of that, course uh, that i really enjoyed of course and uh, a track called give yes and i like how this one this one kind of flips it on you, like you're you're grooving it, uh-huh. grooving to it, and then it like flips the sexy up, big time in the middle there. <laughs> Slows and, it down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, man. And, that's right. That's right. Uh, that's and then right. of course you got uh, uh, who, who's on the you got a big sex solo there in the middle. That is Brian Fritz. That's Brian. I mean that dude. Okay, the guy has always been in 
the ring for me. Like, I don't know what I did to get on this dude's... I mean, he doesn't have a bad side, but I'm saying, like, to be... he. Like, he's Team Laren all yeah. the way. I don't know what I did, but I love you, man, and you know that. And I'm, to this day, I mean, Adam and Aaron know me, but those guys are, like, they're busy. So, like, if you get them in a room, they're like, next song. Like, they already know how to stack these horns. They were telling me stories about how these legendary horn players, like, how they met all these great people that know how to record the horns properly. This is what you want to get a big sound. You want to stack the same parts over and over again. I'm actually giving a secret away because I think that's something they said. But here it is on a Rock Party Podcast, right here for you. Um, <laughs> but Brian was the reason those guys were in that studio that day, dude. I'm telling you. I'm telling you it is. I know I yeah. know it. I mean, Adam and I, were, again, we were friends before. But Brian was the one who's like, we need to be on this project. Like, we need to be a part of this guy's soundtrack um and it was very 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 cool for him to do that but um yeah give is uh give yeah (laughs) it's funny you talk about the slow jam because tony and i debated on if tony bombardo and i debated on if it should be two songs Mm -hmm. he's like this this other song is great just make it two songs don't make it the same song i'm like no man it was written this way let's condense it let's clip the fat from it right let's make it pure but this is how i want it to be and he was like okay Hard. We 
we overlook it in the masses There's no need to define it Or oh, convince me if it's For the truth hey, Together we can take this journey To the center of your love Together we can take this journey To the center of your love Together we can take this journey the center of your love, your love Every time I hear that, I think of these like, almost like, I think there was a Burger King commercial where it was like the big voice, like Barry, uh, Barry White voice coming in. Right. That's all. And I heard it in my head, but I'm like, I can't do that because I'm, that's just not me. Yeah. But. That's what I needed. Back to that's, you. That that's like, what I needed was the big talk down, like, you know, like. <laughs> Hey girl, you know, like <laughs> so, Should have had yeah, you in there. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like this uh, thing that just happened. But and if it was a music video, I would imagine, you know, the backstory behind the first part of Give is because I you know, back in the day, and this was in my my twenties, so this was like I met my my wife who was my girlfriend then, um um around twenty five like I said, twenty four, twenty five. Uh, Real and Gilly's falling apart I'm making another band or trying to I, in the middle of trying to meet Sean and figure out what I'm doing and hopefully writing these songs with uh, or making these songs for the wedding um, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do and who I want to be and I start to teach vocal lessons to Webster students that are going to graduate into Webster University Webster High School students and I meet this student named Wesley Ragland, who I mentioned, Owen Ragland, his younger brother, both geniuses. These guys are incredible. They're with Farfetch, so with Darian Wigfall and Damon Davis, um, who are incredible friends of mine, too, yeah. now. Big but f- friends of the show, too. Totally, yeah, man. man. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, Wesley and I are, are doing these, like, trainings, because he's running out of breath when he gets on stage. The adrenaline's too much for him. By thir- the song like third song he's done he can't rap anymore he's lost his voice so he hires me to condition him to get him to really run like tracks i'm talking we're running like football field tracks and getting him to rap his songs while we're running and so we start to we start to talk about um we start to talk about uh you know what his family does. Who's his dad? His dad's a slew professor, Scott. His mom is a reverend, Rebecca. And this woman, man, she is single-handedly, this family has single-handedly changed my life. They're the reason I went to Africa when I was 27. I taught music in Tanzania with my, my wife. Again, she was my girlfriend. Um, because uh, Rebecca was born in Sierra Leone. And Rebecca was, one day, we were just talking over dinner uh, after one of Wesley's Wesley's music lessons, and she was like, "How do you feel about the homeless?" And I was like, um, "I don't, I don't. I mean, fine. I, mean, I don't know what's what's happening." And she's like, "I have an idea. I have an idea that I think would be awesome if we collaborated." And so we started doing these open mics. At, at once was called the Bridge. It was on Olive. Um, it was a shelter. And I would sing for the homeless, for sojourners. And um, eventually went on a homeless excursion and we even just tried to see how bad or what, like just the living environments for someone that was homeless. We went through the whole thing, she and I. I lasted two days out of what we thought was going to be a week. I stayed in Larry Rice's uh, shelter and had my shoes stolen off my feet 
as I was sleeping. And that was the that was the end for me. I'm like, that's it. I'm done. I have to go home. And this is not. I'm like Dorothy. I'm like clicking my heels. I'm like, take me back to Kansas. I can't do this anymore. Um, give came from this time. If you listen to the lyrics, it talks about empathy. It talks about like, put your shoe on the other foot, um, and, and and see if you can walk it off. Like, see what it's like to go without. Yeah. Um, and so the whole song is really sentimental to those people, the sojourners that taught me um, how to approach a different audience. Like my songs were a lot like how Quarantunes was for my neighborhood uh, recently. I just sang whatever they wanted. They just requested songs and then I got them to come up with me and we were singing songs with them. And dude, it was a game changing experience. And so I wrote those melodies um, then and and then it, you know it turns into this yeah this r&b classic but that's still a memory about the 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 sojourners that are in these shelters like i met some incredible artists that are under our nose that some people will never ever see and right. know like i'm talking talented people that just because of choices because of the journey of life it shifted them on a, another path but they're so silly talented yeah um that i had the pleasure to meet so yeah, that's man. give man that's given a yeah. nutshell that's really beautiful story though thank man. you man thank you. that uh yeah man that, there's a lot there like i didn't i had no idea you yeah been to africa and all this stuff. oh like, yeah 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 yeah, like, yeah 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 the, the the tanzania story um is tied to the intro of the record so the intro and the outro of the, there's an intro and an outro uh, that we we you know you and I were talking earlier about just this this funky sound. Um, that's really a remix of an old school song. It's a song that was playing on my Mazda six, the the radio that I was driving through. I was going back to Hillsboro uh, at twenty seven to find um, out that I I I just got asked to go to to Africa with Wesley. I'm like, man, I, this is going to be amazing. And that song, the boom, 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 this this groove in the intro and outro, is the song, whatever that song was that spoke of this groove, again, was, you know, stuck on me. It was just like, it was there. So I remember, um, and this is why it kind of starts and ends with this song is, uh, when I was driving out to tell, again, my girlfriend, who's my wife now, um, yo, we're going to get a chance to go to Africa. This is going to be the first adventure we'll ever take out of the country together. It's a huge thing for our relationship. Um, at the time, we're living on Sutherland, which is right down the street from us here in South City. Um, I get a phone call in the same time. I'm getting ready to tell my parents, hey, I'm going to go to Africa. This is going to be... A Huge. I get a phone call from the same time uh, from my dad. And he's like, son, <laughs> he's got a very, he's, uh, he was born in Arkansas again with that Lee Von Helm thing, that, that early family bloodline. He's like, son, I need you to come out to the house. I need to have a, a talk with you. And I could tell that something was going on. And around that time, um, he was telling me that my mom, he and my mom were going to split. They were going to get a divorce. And I just remember like this, this balance, you know what I'm saying? Or lack thereof of like joy. And this is kind of a thing for me. It's something that I'm learning more now as a father. I'm definitely learning more now as an artist than the skin that I'm in now, which is like um, just enjoy the joy because there's some not that I'm I'm waiting for something bad but I'm saying you kind of almost have to have this yin and yang right you right. have to have this thing because if you only have the joy you live in excess and you party and you don't have a wake up call until it's too late and with that phone call it's changed dude it was like the crossroads for me like this phone call and this trip it changed, it made me, every every lesson through life I learned because of this one phone call. I, I realized that, I realized that the human beings that were in my life 
are, are just human and they can make mistakes and they're going to bleed like you. They're going to, they're going to grow apart. They're going to, you know, they're just, they're real. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there was, there's was this echo of this song, man. And that song was playing in the background when I got the phone call, when I was like sitting in their driveway, getting ready to find out what was going on with them and be there with my brother and like, be like, yo, what can I do for you? Can I, can I, can we mend this somehow? Can we hold on to the, to each other? Right. Cause that decision ended up, we ended up, uh, that was the selling of the family farm, if you will, the, our house that we grew up in in Hillsboro. All that stuff was sure. going to be capped. So that was the beginning and the end of the record for me. I'm mm. like, this song is going to be the one that haunts. Yeah. You know? So uh, if you're just tuning in, <laughs> it sounds like it's a dark, dark record. But it is. It's like, it's very interesting how a pop album or a funky, upbeat record can still have so much that's there yeah definitely you know um anyway yeah man yeah yeah i don't know that's uh i went through my parents split in like when i was 16 so like yeah definitely uh i mean totally flipped everything that which is late in the game again so you're you're a late which i commend you man good uh, yeah cheers to you yeah that but it was uh you know it was tough when you're like you know like saying like you mentioned losing the family home and that, that kind of thing like yeah and all that just like it just uh so yeah, it's it's always kind of uh, especially my dad built our home. So, wow. uh, yeah, so I was like, sentiment. yeah, I always like had this like dream of like someday uh, going back and trying to buy it back or something. You know, keep it in the family. And, Absolutely. Um, so, I hear you. Yeah, I sat in on uh, a phone call with my mom for the auction when they were getting ready to auction the house off. You know, a part of you again as a life lesson, like I mentioned. It's it's again it's a, it's something that's a lesson about letting go, isn't it? It's like something that you have to kind of. Well, I tried to hold on to selfishly. You know, I I wanted to to hold on to that time um, because I didn't say what I really wanted to say back in twenty seven. I didn't speak up then. I didn't say the words that I really wanted. Right. Um. And now I'm like, man, well there it goes. Yeah. <laughs> with this house. So. Yeah. But yeah, that's I, I'm glad you brought that up with with 16 because a- anytime you talk to, like I teach students, I mean I love teaching my students and 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 uh, talking about lightly talking about our upbringings because you learn so much about their their early process and how they were raised and then what what helps them to learn what what gets them to because in my opinion. The later it is for divorce, it's a bit harder, isn't it? It's a bit, it's a bit, in my opinion, it was a little more challenging than it being, I mean, it's all hard, but I'm saying because I was older, right? I'm like, no, 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 this, no, this is the picture. This <laughs> is what the picture was. You can't just erase pictures. You can't, you know, sure. you well, can't ex- take away the, especially like they've been together that long. Like my parents were together 25 years before they split. Yeah, man. And then, you know, again, it's yeah. like, it's just weird to think about like them not together now. Like, so absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It was yeah. definitely a, yeah, a weird time for a while trying to, trying to adjust and things. So, yeah. And there's that thing again with me, what, you know, mentioning with Levon Helm about heroes and pedestals and idols and, my family, especially my dad, who first opened the door and then locked it on me after I broke his Polaris, <laughs> you know, he taught me, he showed me the ropes. Right. You know, he was the one who, in a way, he is Levon Helm, and that's what I wanted to be. It was like this subliminal, like, fatherly thing that's going on. He's a Southern boy. He learned through, through this, this American music. Um, it was a tradition in the Loveless family. It's all tradition. Like they have gospel records, man. In the seventies, that's what my dad and his family, his like eleven brothers and sisters, did for fun. Right. They sat in on recording these records. So in a way, it's a bloodline for me. Um, but yeah, it was it was a it was a strange thing to realize that they are just human beings, and I created the pedestal. For them, I'm right. like, oh, you're the one who gave them a cape. That's not what, that's not what it's about. Like, it's just they're just humans like you and I. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 
They still around, both of them? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. My mom. Uh, my mom's been going through some. You know, the 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 losing an occupation and gaining another occupation. There's a lot of juggling there. Um, God bless her with that. Yeah. And uh, my dad is out in Michigan, and he and I talk again. It's like we went through. Of course, during that time, especially 27 to 33, we didn't see eye to eye on anything. We didn't see eye eye to eye, especially on the tough subjects, Mm -hmm. politics, religion. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of in that right now with my dad. Oh, yeah. And it sucks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Absolutely. We haven't talked in eight months. Yeah. Yeah. Last, last time I called him, I told him mom died, and that was the last. That's the last we talked. Yeah. So yeah, it's really, it's really hard, you know. It it is, and it's something that, man. And I appreciate you bringing that and telling me that and bringing it up because it's uh, it's ingrained in me now to because of because of Lennon, like because of my son. Right. You know, once I became a father, um, I started to get into a daily routine of challenging myself and it's the same thing that that sean that that all these people that were mentoring me were telling me to do it was like yo get get away take the armor off like i was afraid of of again by getting hurt from from my peers from my family from anything and the more and more i just really started talking to them and letting down this um the drum set you know like getting away from it and and telling them this is how i feel like with this wreck with the record and i'm not just telling you this to tie it back i'm just saying it straight up once i played it i sent it to my dad uh, again and i remember talking about every song and dissecting it and i did it just like i'm doing with you where I almost get the permission slip to be like, I'm going to tell about all this stuff. Because when I was 27, dude, to, to 33, it took a toll on me suppressing feelings, drinking too much, addiction. All these things started coming into play be- because I chose to, at 27, when the intro and outro song is prevalent in the record, I'm, I'm sitting there in this moment in my car thinking okay how am i going to tell my father and mom my mother that you you can't do this right. because i'm 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 a part of this like you, you're going to turn your back on me um i so i said nothing so that led to years of lies suppression and I just realized, dude, like after, after Lennon was born, I was like, I can't, I can't, this is me, I'm suffocating myself. Even though I don't agree with him and don't agree with them on, on everything else, I'm like, I gotta, I gotta lean in with it. I gotta lean in with love and call him up and try to, to change it. And of course, everything else started to change to my pattern of what I did with my body and mm-hmm. taking care of my, my soul, man. But yeah, dude, I, uh, I hear you. I hear you with that. It's really, really hard. Yeah. Where's your dad? Is your dad, uh, does your dad live here? Live locally? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we yeah, just don't, I don't know, I don't know where and when, but just started kind of drifting apart and not, not necessarily uh, seeing eye to eye on a lot of things. So, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was difficult, but uh, uh, I don't yeah. know. But yeah, yeah. It was, mom was always a, uh, you know, uh, I think you said something about your mom. Yeah. Uh, very, you know, getting you out playing, you know, singing stuff like you're saying and like uh, Absolutely. that story. And that's that resonated with me because I, that was my mom. She, you know, when I didn't perform and I, she wasn't, you know, pushing me out there to do that. But, uh, you know, later in life after uh, she retired, we'd go to a ton of shows together and she was always, yes. uh, you know, became a huge fan and, and supporter of all my friends' music. So she yes. was coming out to the, all those voodoo shows and all these different things. And, Absolutely. And then, uh, but, you know, then I mean, anything I did, any of my shows I booked or whatever, she was uh, always there and always wearing her shirt and everything and, you know, <laughs> yeah. just talking to everybody. That's and and uh, so it was, it was really great to have that, 
that support her like that. And uh, so it was, uh, you know, it's been re- really tough without her now. But uh, I know. Yeah. I so know, man. Um, I, know. I know. And I, 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 again, like I appreciate, I appreciate you sharing it because it's, it's, uh, man, for me, it's so, it's so right there now. Like it's, it's everything for me. It's the, it's the reason I, I do call, I guess it's like, whether you see life is short or life is long, it doesn't really matter because these days, and, and especially now with the time we're living in, these days, like they, that you have to see them as starting over. Um, and I remember, you know, especially um, when I got back from New York and and trying to figure out, again, just who I was and what am I really doing? Because I, I failed so hard at, at, in my opinion, at the dream. There's something about making up something in your head who you think you're going to be. All right. And this happened, this keeps happening to me. Until it just stopped happening, which I think again was like I hit this curve of almost going on. I'm almost 35. I'm 34, where I just kind of gave up on. I'm not saying I don't have expectations when I wake up. I'm just saying I really gave up on. I have low expectations, man. I mean, I'm I'm really like, I'm tired of trying to be Levon Helm. I'm tired of trying to be, uh, like I said before, James Dean. I was always trying to escape and make you know not be myself because being myself was was harder sure it was harder to go oh i'm just going to be me um again the suppression led to that and and again a whole bunch of nonsense me me uh uh destroying my again my my body and my again my the way that i was living in excess and um but now I've made it a point to really confront confront those on issues that I that I might not see eye to eye specifically because I want to learn from it, man. I mean, I just think that there's so much, you know, there there's a there's a song that really started a talk around where the record where volume one should go. Like what is this? Because the first idea was to release community conversation. That was the very first song that I was like, I think this is the this is the one that we should just let sit on people. Right. It was during a time where I was very, very, very upset about what is going on with our country. Right. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> de- definitely like a heavier, much heavier political tone totally. and everything. And totally. Uh, totally. Which is, you know, it's it's still it's still funky, but right, right, right. but the lyrical content is de- yeah. definitely heavy. Yeah, and uh, yeah. so yeah, it was it was kind of there is definitely a a, a little bit of a separation on the record. I feel like because a lot of it is yes. more feel good, you yes. know, type of stuff. But that's one like really it has a message to it. And yes, yes, between that and I'll get by, which is the closer. Yeah, I think. Or Martin. Uh, Martin is another yeah. one. Martin is another one where you're, you know, I'm talking about really heavy things that I'm seeing. I'm just, again, it's a memory. It's still the memory that's there, but all around the same time, really, it was written from the point of view of my students when I started to teach um, around 27, 28, getting right back from Africa, I started working for a boarding school. And during the day, I would get hired on eventually to work at the school I teach at now, which is called City Academy. Great, um, just unbelievable placement. And um, the children are, like, they, they've saved me on so many different accounts. Uh, just really, really brought me back down to earth. And I remember election day um, when, you know, Trump got into office and... Uh, I remember my reaction that the, like the reaction of the students my, these kids <laughs> and how I I made a decision I wasn't ready to do it but I made a decision 
after finding out how many family members and people that friends, like people that I loved, um, voted in different ways that I didn't agree with. And it's easy to shut that door. Like I was doing it again with my dad. I was doing it with my feelings. It's easier to do that. In my opinion, it was easier for me to stay stay numb. Mm-hmm. Right? But this thing kept happening. It kept being introduced from the from give with the homeless shelter to to the hiding behind the drum set. All these things were all it was all the same lesson. It was just it was just about you know, you can you can stay numb if you want, but I'm still going to throw life at you and you're going to feel uncomfortable because everybody you know voted or decided this thing. So you can either choose to run and not love them or you can figure out how to just have a conversation with them. And so I remember talking to my kids about it, to the students about it, talking to my wife about it, talking to my dad about it, talking to all my aunts and uncles about it. You can not invite family members for as long as you want to Thanksgiving because of their political views, but they're still going to be around. (laughs) So I remember writing this song. I'm like, I can't even tell people how I feel without just putting Mm -hmm. it down like this. And I think, like you're saying, the con- it, it needs to be a conversation instead of instead of just shutting everybody off. Like it's easy. Take the opportunity to, to educate somebody. Of course. Like you know, and that's a pro- I think that's a part of the problem is like so many people are ignorant enough to where they don't want to learn. They're, of course, they're stuck in their ways. On both sides, right. though. Yeah. On both For sides, sure. yeah. there's good sides but and bad sides to it. You go, you're still yeah. cutting them off though. Right, but that's like we need to all learn, be able to be able to have that conversation to learn from each other. You know, and somehow meet in the middle and stuff. So. Call me a fool. I think that music is still a bridge. I think that it's something that you can have heavy conversations and you can still lean in with love. I can't tell you how many people I talk to on the interwebs, on the social medias about <laughs> about like hot topics. And sometimes I throw it off. Sometimes I'll be like, yo, don't up. Uh, you're and guess what? You're blocked. Like I, I've done that. Mm-hmm. But but I always go back and I'm like, yo, what are you doing? Right. Like, I, 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 is that, that's the easy way, the easy route. Mm-hmm. And again, it started with, it started with my family, man. It started with because they were raised in fear, grandparents especially were raised in fear. My parents kind of felt a little bit different, but they didn't want to go about uh, you know, this reprimanding that they're going to get from their parents so they didn't speak about it that much, right? It's a common tale. And then so for us, all I wanted to do was rebel. Everything was about rebelling. So I was already used to rebelling. So what do I have to lose? All oh, politics, I'm not going to agree with you on that. Even right. if I did, I'm not going to tell you. So it led to where it needs to be, which is like, no, no, I hear your side too. I get your side. Now, sometimes it's like all I see is red and they, there's no reaching anyone. But I think that music has this, it has this ability, doesn't it? It has this thing to let you play. It has this thing to let you almost become a child. And there's something about when you're brought back to dancing and freedom and these things you said you talk about with your mom, like how... That's what she wants. She's retired. This is what she wants to spend her time doing. Right. That's that can save our hearts in a way, man. If you if you see it for what it is, you can kind of talk about really heavy things. Yeah. You know, and community. I'll get by, um, Martin. These are tough things that I'm seeing about specifically about our city. That. I don't know how else to really open up the platform. Like I, I wanna, I wanna talk about them. I know people sometimes don't want to talk. Maybe they don't. They are hearing it too much. But let me just sit it there for them mm-hmm. and let the, let's see what happens. Yeah. You said educate, which I think is a brilliant way yeah. of going about it. Yeah, man. Well, and I feel like also, um, 
you know, we've kind of there. There are still those artists doing it, but we've kind of totally. got we've kind of gotten away from it. Where, but you know, you look at uh, all of the the greats, uh, you know, Dylan and whatever, you know, so on. Oh my God, like Stevie, the, Marvin. Yeah, but these guys yeah, were writing about a lot of you know messed up times, heavy stuff, and then. But these songs are still just as relevant today. Absolutely. These, that's why they are still celebrated and, and carried on years and years later. Absolutely. Because they have substance. There's something there. These guys are speaking the, their truth that they know that they're seeing in their own neighborhoods and everything else that yes. every day. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, yeah, there might be a fun pop song that comes on the radio and it gets stuck in your head for a week or whatever and it's gone. Right. But the ones that stick around are the ones that have something there and That's and right. i feel like uh even though it's hard to hear sometimes that you people need to hear it and put it in there if you put it into a, a funky groove maybe it'll stick around long enough to they'll learn something from it and yeah it's so true it is this way of of hypnotizing almost yeah you know where you're in that groove and all of a sudden you're like what do you say what did they just say <laughs> like bill withers god bless his soul this dude was blue collar soul to the max, man. I mean, this guy saw, he saw the whole picture. Right. And he was able to, I mean, even with like. R.I.P., by the way. Of yeah. course, man. Yeah, of man. course. Of course. That was rest a, that was rest a, in. That was in a tough power, one. man. That dude, yo, he, like, lean on me. Mm-hmm. Case in point, which coincidentally is the first song I ever learned how to play on the piano. Um, it's still heavy. Like yeah. he's talking about losing someone. He's talking about losing everything. And here I am up the road. Like help me. Like let me. But that can be applied to any situation. So it's really brilliant. Um, it's really brilliant. But again, I'm just stealing, man. I'm just stealing <laughs> from that because. Those guys and those humans are uh, the OGs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I uh, I dig it, man. This record Thank is you. really a lot of fun. Thank you. And you can you can find it everywhere on August twentieth, yes. uh, wherever you're getting digital music at. You can find Laren Loveless uh, music on your Facebook and Instagram accounts. Yes, and yes, yes. Follow along for more updates, including that video and like we mentioned and. All kinds of wonderful things coming up soon. And check out those pics uh, from Nate because Nate's – he's the man. Like, he's a very talented uh, individual with that camera. So uh, does some great work. And um, – but uh, this uh, – man, this has been incredible, Aaron. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I've, it's, it's interesting because, like, again, we – well, I know you from kind of one thing, and it's just like it's so crazy when every time we talk, it's like I learn a whole different thing, you know, learning so much more about you, and so it's uh, it's it's like uh, another another layer, you know. It's like oh. yeah, dude. Before I go, I have to tell you, let's just break human, you know, the 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 skin here. Just how happy I am to see you doing what you do. You bring so much joy, and and. Uh, pleasure and just like just your again we talk about your aura we were joking about the picture that i took (laughs) but it's true like you have this thing that has to happen for st louis so just keep doing your light work bro um by light i mean shine that thing man (laughs) um uh for the the last song again i wanted to mention on the record because you were like yo you want to talk about a certain song before uh we we rap um right before covid and this is kind of there's an omen here, I think. Okay. Right before we wrapped to um, record the last string section, uh, which I didn't mention them anyway, so um, check out the strings in the song I'll Get By. Um, Sam Golden is amazing. And Rania, uh, mm-hmm. she plays cello. And the choir that sings with them is the all-star chorus directed by Maria Ellis. So this group of people create this just amazing sound in the song I'll Get By. And which the the song almost didn't happen because we just didn't we were we were getting close to just trying to figure out how to wrap it because COVID was happening. Right. And Ben and I were like, I don't I mean, if we can't get 
in together, it's going to make it way harder to get the final touches of the song. And so on the last day we finally booked, Sam and Rania came in to do the strings for the song. And um, if you hear the message in the song, it is about just keeping your head up and something bad happens, something evil takes over, darkness happens, and never give up. Just keep going. Get by with it. Um, So it, it was a message that I had to hear more than ever because these times that we're in are so uncertain and it's it can be very 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 heavy um and the song alone was almost like proof for me that that again it was something that I just needed to hear that I had to I had to convince myself like even though it was it was still written in inspiration coming from my uh, my inspirations my, my these people we talked about Marvin and Stevie and that sure. but dude it's it's just to me it's it's the the reason I keep going and listening to this advice from my mentors um, to just don't give up I know that there's a lot of a lot of things happening so I want to but I want to commend you, man, because even today, going through the usual, the norm, we're getting back into schools. I'm trying to figure out how to teach again from square one. Um, the one thing I was looking forward to is sitting down with you because I needed that almost like nectar from a bee, man. <laughs> right. I needed to like get your energy. So thank you for just letting me share the stories. Yeah, man. I feel Absolutely. like it came out because of you. So Well, I... I'm glad I could be a small part of it, man. I, oh, of I, course. No. Uh, that's uh, that's really all I look to do with this show is is to keep the conversation going of St. Louis music because uh, I believe in it and I believe that we we're way overlooked and like and there's a lot of amazing things going on between all of it. You know, the players and the bands and but uh, the the people alone and like are really incredible and uh, I just want everybody to be heard so hopefully uh, hopefully one of these days uh, the rest of the world will be catching on here and stuff that's right so, yeah that's right Good. which, which well, is kind of weird that uh, I'm uh, to tell you the truth uh, the show actually uh, is charting in France like according oh to oh my gosh so apparently if people in France are listening yes. so uh, we got some <laughs> we got something going man. good then yeah so hopefully some people are taking well, again it's that energy you have dude when you boomerang that stuff it comes back to you right I mean yeah. I feel like that's a that's a that's a gift that's yeah. a gift that's worth sharing yeah man I'm trying trying good. to do my part. Good, keep going. But, uh, but yeah, brother, this was uh, so much you, fun, man. man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you for uh, sharing sharing all these stories and songs. And uh, I can't wait for the rest of the, everyone else to get funky with us and listen along. So Yes, sir. But uh, thank you, Laren. And uh, thank you, man. I'll see you soon, my friend. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Rock, paper, Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.